What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Sith Council. I'm by my lonesome today. Lonesome. Going to be doing uh, some fun stuff today because I said, you know, Steph's not here. She's just singing in the rain in London. And Mike's doing Mike stuff. I think he's um, working right now. So I was like, who am I going to talk to? Who am I going to talk to? And I said, I know who I'm going to talk to. I'm going to talk to the audience. I'm going to talk to the audience. And I said, you know, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send out a, um, a tweet and Facebook and all that, and you guys submit all your questions, and let's go old school like we used to do on Jedi Council, and you guys answer some questions, and, uh, and we'll, we'll get into it. So before we do that, I just will say there's some news that's coming out that we'll, we'll talk about. The Jedi Fallen Order sequel trailer is apparently going to come to Star Wars Celebration. Um, is there stuff that's going to happen with uh, Damon Lindelof and, 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 uh, and uh, all that? I think that there's really... And oh, yeah, and Christopher Lloyd is joining Mandalorian Season 3. So we'll talk about that real quick up top, and then we'll get into uh, the questions. But it's Sith Council, everybody. Let's get into it. Starting now. I can feel your anger. It gives you focus. Makes you stronger. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Sith Council. It is Wednesday night. I'm happy to have you all here with me. Joining me live or on the premiere, I appreciate you. Do me a favor, will you? Even if you're watching on the premiere, shoot a um, a comment in the YouTube and click like because that's what where the interaction really helps. Really gets people like every time you see the notification, say, "Oh, more people are interacting with your video," and that's how more people will see it. And if you're enjoying Sith Council, that's all I ask. And if you want to join SEN, uh, the Patreon, you can do that. Because we do exclusive live shows once a month. I might do a Star Wars one, or we could do a big thing one. We have rewatches going on there. SEN Live is on there. So you should, uh, you should check that out. And obviously subscribe. Hit the notification, the like, all that stuff. Um, all right, first things first. Let's get into this. Christopher Lloyd is going to be in Mandalorian Season 3. That's cool. I love these retro kind of uh, classic legends that they bring from legendary movies, whether it's Carl Weathers and, and now Christopher Lloyd. It's amazing. I'm really, I'm, I'm, lo- I'm loving that. Um, so if, uh, let's, let's see what they say over at Star Wars Newsnet about the great Christopher Lloyd. Okay, here we go. Christopher Lloyd, The Mandalorian, continues to add more movie stars from the 80s. So there you go. After enlisting Carl Weathers, Nick Nolte, and Werner Herzog, or even Michael Bean. That's right. Favreau and his team have recruited Back to the Future's Christopher Lloyd to guest star in the third season of Disney+. Plus. And he was so good, by the way. He was really good in, um, what the hell, the, the Tender Bar. The ben Affleck, George Clooney. Thing. Was, he was really good in that. He said that. Not much else is known about Lloyd's role at the moment, except from guest star. He should not be expected to pop up in more than one episode. This is yet another hit in the book of Favreau and Filoni recruiting stars from their favorite franchises like Rocky or Terminator. This will also be Lloyd's third major franchise after playing Emmett Brown in Back to the Future and the Klingon antagonist Commander Krug in Star Trek III. While he might not, he may have gone unnoticed, Lloyd, now at 83, has been busy in the, in the last few years with roles such as The Tender Bar and Nobody. He's a, that's right, he was Nobody also. He's a three-time Emmy winner actor too. The Mandalorian Season 3 has been shooting for six months already and should be wrapping soon. Ahsoka is up next to film in the Manhattan Beach lot. And Besides Lloyd, we also know about Pascal, Weathers, and Esposito returning to the third season of Mandalorian. Katie Sackhoff is also expected to return, along with other supporting characters from season two. Set photos leaks have revealed. I don't want to look at those. Bryce Dallas Howard, Carl Weathers are back to direct, and Favreau and Filoni are overseeing the whole process. We don't know about more directors. Filoni is also expected to helm at least one. The next Star Wars show coming to Disney Plus will be Obi-Wan on the 25th. Uh, That was from the great Miguel Fernandez. Who I'm sure is watching. Hello, Miguel. Uh, and Miguel comments on every episode. Be like Miguel, please. Please, please, and thank you. Please, and thank you, thank you, and please. Great. Okay. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? Let's uh, let's talk about. It. I mean, I love the idea that he's going to be in it. I think that's uh, I think it's that's phenomenal. 
Um, he is a great actor. He's really good in both those movies, Nobody and um, Tender Bar. And I like that he's doing. He's got a little resurgence coming out. So, so sign me up, man. And as far as the other ones go, there's other actors. If they're going to be, if they're not going to be in it, I guess we can get into that because there are quite a few questions today, and I'm I'm between Facebook and Twitter, so we should start to get into it because I want to make sure I got. I couldn't get to everybody's. There was, I mean, there was really, and I was, I didn't expect as many comments coming in on both Twitter and Facebook. There were a lot, so if I didn't get to your question this time, I'm sorry. I will do it again. Um, So there you go. Let's start here, and let's get the first question. First question comes in from Elias Martinez. I'm sure you've talked about it, but I've just missed it. What are your expect- expectations for season three of Mando? I want it to be a bit more serialized and have a darker tone. After that Kenobi trailer, it's clear they're not afraid to make it a bit more darker. Um, yeah, look, I think that that's the beauty of, and I hope that that's what Moon Knight starts to do, is that, and if you look at Moon Knight and then Ms. Marvel, the Marvel side and Disney and and Disney then going on and putting Daredevil and the Punisher and all these things on there on the the platform also is that you can have both and you can you can play around and play with the tone and then whether you the rumor that we've talked about on this show that there's like a Stranger Things High Republic type of show coming out with a younger generation and it's more geared towards towards young adults and, and you know kids um, and I think it's a smart move. It's a, it's, a, it's a smart move, and they can get darker. So as far as season three of Mando goes, like there there could be some tragedy. There can be some things that are happening, and I think my expectations of what the show was going to be and now after seeing Boba Fett have changed because I thought that he would be on his own with um, Bo-Katan and, and Oscar Reeves and all of them fighting in Mandalore to restore Mandalore and, and, and fight and become the Mandalorian. That's, that's what I thought, that's what I thought the, the show was going to be um, in season three. But clearly I was, I was mistaken because I thought, yeah, they're not, they don't need them to team up with Grogu again, like not, not that soon. But I, and this is, this is complete speculation, and I just could see whether it's Disney executives or Lucasfilm or whoever it is going, okay, People want Grogu back. T-shirt sales wants Grogu back. He sells merch. Um, we need him back somehow. Can we fit him in and make it work for the story? And they did. Or maybe it was always the plan. It's also um, very possible that it was always the plan because I, I thought it worked well. I didn't love that he left uh, Luke, but um, but it worked. So I think they're going to be together more. I think that Grogu will be getting a little bit more powerful. Um I wonder how much it's going to tie into Ahsoka, if at all, because that's a good way to get Grogu out of town during the times. You know, you don't forget about the outer regions, and I hope these, I hope the or the unknown regions, right? I hope that they establish that more because it's established well in the in the novels, but I hope they establish it well in the um, in the TV shows because you can explain because you can't. I guess you could kill Grogu, but if you were going to, you'd probably stick him in with Luke because then he would have probably died during the, the Kylo Ren stuff. But if not, then where the hell is he during the new trilogy? That's, that's, a, that's a question, right? The other thing that is very unlikely is if they somehow do the thing with the, with the time and they change, the, because time has changed in Rebels, if they were able to time travel and, and maneuver stuff and, um, and if they did that and it's almost like a different, different universe where the, where the new trilogy happens. It won't happen, but that's something. What's so funny about when it comes to Star Wars, when you think about time travel, right? There's time travel obviously a lot in, in Marvel now. There's time travel that's happening in The Flash and, and all that. And, and people are like, oh, yeah, that's great. But they're like, yeah, keep time travel out of Star Wars. That's the one place where it should happen. I don't want it to happen. Let me, let me, let me be clear on that. But it's the one place where it should because if time travel is going to happen, it's probably going to happen in somewhere in space. And because of the way time and space works, it would be Star Wars. And, and yeah, I know how to we go fast enough in the lights, but we can, we can go back in time a little bit if we, if we do it. That makes the most sense out of all of it with, with uh, black holes and, and all that stuff. It's, it's space. So why wouldn't you be able to time travel? 
that that would make a lot of sense. But for some reason, people for Star Wars, like, yeah, keep time travel out of Star Wars. It, it's it just would make the most sense. Um, but I, but I'm also I don't necessarily know if I need time travel in Star Wars, so it's weird. Anyway, that's probably why there's, there's such a strange debate on it. So my expectations of of Mando season three are are pretty. Um, I'm I'm pretty pumped, and I think that you know, uh, and again, I know nothing about it. I always have to say that when it comes to anything Katie Sackhoff is um, involved in, because I don't want, I, like, this is pure, pure speculation. I just think that she's going to be, she's going to, I think bo going to have a pretty big role. I think that they've been setting that up in season, in season two. They set it up, they set it up through the stuff that they, they made it a, 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 they made it a priority to show her come back and work with Ahsoka in the last season of Clone Wars that they put out. So I think Bo-Katan winds up having a pretty significant role. Um, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a lot of her. And I hope, for my, you know, selfishly, I hope we see a lot of her. All right, next question. Next question. Thank you for that one, by the way. Uh, that was season one. And now, Obi-Con Jabroni, great name. With the recent comments that Samuel Jackson made to Bryce Dallas Howard about Mace Windu, how would you feel about him making a return in future series? Eh. Um, it depends. It depends on not Mandalorian. That's what she's directing right now. You know, he's. I think he said, "Put me in coach in the Mandalorian." Why I don't I don't want him to come back? I don't want him to come back as far as being alive. Like the idea of deep faking him a little bit and put him during the Clone Wars era and seeing him kick a little ass and being and having him be a part of some scenes maybe during if it was Obi-Wan you know and there were some scenes where you would have um some conversations between the two of them like a DH Sam Jackson or, or deep fake Sam Jackson and he's talking about um you know whatever it might be with, with Obi-Wan and Anakin and some Clone Wars stuff and if they do that in, in other in other shows or even in Ahsoka if there's because uh, Hayden is in Ahsoka, so if there are flashback scenes with them as Padawan and 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 uh, Master inside of that, and then Sam Jackson is there for that, would love it. I having him come back though. After it's like, all right, so he recovered, and then he just said, "Bad to hell with it. I'm not going to help anybody anymore. I'm, I got thrown out of a window. Screw these people." That's that's out of character. I mean, he took him, and it took him how long to recover? Even if it took him ten years to recover, he could still go help Obi Wan if he wanted to. So please, uh, uh, no, don't, 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 don't bring him back. Don't bring him back, but have him. But I would like to see him. I, I'd like. It's weird. I'd like to see him return, but I don't want the character to have lived. That's the way I'll say it. So, all right. Next one. Next question. Jan D. Raybon. Wouldn't it be an advantage for Disney and Lucasfilm to do an old Republic cinematic TV universe? Would it give them it would it would give them a fresh start, clean with new characters and no expectations? Plus, from a commercial view, loads of Jedi and Sith is probably great merchandising. Thoughts? You singing my song, homie? Yeah, of course. I've been singing about the old Republic forever. Um, it's baby steps right now, right? It's baby steps, and it's they're they're establishing the TV universe well. They're establishing it well, and they're, and they're dipping into ca familiar characters, but they're still, remember, they're still giving us new characters, right? They're still giving us, like, Din Darjin, new character that is very popular now. Grogu, new character, very popular now. Yeah, sure, same species as Yoda, but whatever. There's other species of, of other things running around, but uh, Luke comes back, we get it. They... Oh, they always got to rely on Luke. They, were, yeah, but in that time period, for it, it works. But I understand where you're going with all this, and I'll, I'll, I'll get there. Um, but the new characters, and even Ahsoka, Ahsoka is is not new to the hardcore Star Wars fans who watches everything. But the casual Star Wars fans t didn't know who she was. Now they know through live action and Rosario Dawson, right? So um, there's a lot. There's a lot there. Then the Boba Fett. I, I'm, I'm with a lot of people here. I, or maybe not. I think that you did Boba Fett, good, no need for season two. If you're going to start to work into something else, let's go off of your idea and start to do that. They're gonna, I think they're going to play with the High Republic first. They're going to play with High Republic um, deeply. They're going to go into the uh, that video game that's coming out. They're going to do the Acolyte, which takes place like at the end of the High Republic. So they're going to play with that first. Let's see what happens with Knights of the Old Republic 
in um, it, when I think they're, they're re-release of the video game. Hopefully it gets popular and they they're redoing the whole thing. So hopefully people go and they get it and maybe maybe it can start to boost some people to to learn about it a little bit more. But I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think the high, the old Republic is a great place to have it because in the High Republic, it's all there's all Jedi and then there's this Sith kind of hanging out in the background, staying hidden for however long, you know, the birth of Plagueis and all that stuff, which is cool. I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. But uh, I've always wanted to see, like, the, the Old Republic trailer that they came out with uh, in, like, 2008 or 2009, whatever it was, and all those Sith get off of the ship and all the Jedi start fighting. It's like, oh, holy shit, man, I'd love to watch that. Oh, I'd love to see that. And that's what it would do. And I still, and, and this isn't just for Star Wars. This is just for a lot of video games that do this. Um, they change so much inside of the story because they feel like everybody has seen it. And it's not, you can't just make the, the you've got to treat it like a book. And the book, when, when you go and you, and you see a, a movie based off a book, a lot of times, they, they switch things up, obviously, but they stick to the the core of what the what it is. And if you're and you go in and you've seen, look at Game of Thrones, like when the Red Wedding stuff happened, right? Book people would sit with people who haven't watched it, and they're like, oh, oh, oh man, let's see how they're going to react, right? And they knew, but they but they wanted to see what they envisioned and how they saw it and how they read it in that moment. And I think the same could be said for like Knights of Republic fans. I would be completely fine. With the, I, mean, I won't ruin it for people who don't know it, but like the, the there's a there's like a massive twist inside of it, and I'm like leave that as it is, leave it as it is, and leave the whole story as it is. You know, condense it and make it ten episodes or twelve episodes if you can, and and start start your your old republic with the knights of the old republic, and you can treat that like Rome because then Bane comes. I think it's like a thousand years later or something like that, but you can. You can start to tell that timeline of like old Rome is the old Republic. So I, I couldn't agree more, man. I wish that there's, there's so much that you can do inside of all that and show and fill in all those blanks of how they were so strong at one point, how it was uh, Sith versus the Jedi, how eventually Darth Bane then took over and then said, you know, it's got to be the rule of two, the Sith going hiding, and tell that consistent timeline from there all the way through. I think it would be fascinating to then go back and watch all the stuff that then pieces in so and someone asked me a question kind of similar to that so i'll hold off on it um but uh but yeah i i think uh i i, I agree i think a lot of jedi and a lot of sith is great merchandising i i think that would be something i want to see i don't know they've been pretty hesitant to to do it for a long time jonathan bose uh call me bosey does the timeline jumping between pro here's this this is it I think this is this is the, the, the comment that I was actually referring to. Does the timeline jumping between projects, Mando and Boba set post Jedi, Kenobi set in the Dark Times, Acolyte in the High Republic, etc., throw off more casual fans? Would it make more sense to follow a Marvel style method where the shows most, mostly fall in chrono chronological order? Um, I get where you're coming from. I get it. The casual fan will have to ask the non casual fan, wait, where does this take place? Because, like, if I. For example, I show my wife Obi-Wan. She's seen Revenge of the Sith, I think, once, doesn't remember it at all. And I was like, oh, yeah, this takes place. And then she's like, wait, where? They might very well might be confused. Um, but I think that I like the idea of doing basically what we just talked about before. And that's make as many time periods whenever you want and then piece them all together whenever you feel you have the time to do it. Right, so let's go back to that previous conversation and say they start the the Old Republic and the Knights of the Old Republic, and so you can, if you wanted to do a rewatch of stuff, you're like, oh, I'm gonna watch the Knights of the Old Republic series that they did, that leads into the Darth Bane series that they did, that leads into the um, the Acolyte um, and the High Republic series, the High Republic kid series that they did, that leads into the Acolyte, which then leads into um, uh, the Darth Plagueis series, you know, and then leads into um, whatever, Phantom Menace, so on, so on, and so on. So you can piece it together whenever you want. You could essentially do that now with things if you wanted to. Like, I think that once Obi-Wan comes out, think about that, how much fun that is. I think that's why it's a good strategy because for people like, um, let's say, the casual fan who's watching with a hardcore fan, and they go, all right, Obi-Wan's out. Let's watch the prequels first and then watch Obi-Wan because it's going to have more of an impact. The same way that 
I had just done a rewatch of all the Spider-Man movies. Um, I watched all the Spider-Man movies for with, for the big thing, and then I watched No Way Home, and it was just it was an incredible experience because I was so I knew the whole lore because I just watched it. I was so fresh on it. Um, and I think that that worked better than, than kind of going in going, oh, wait, what happens here? I'm not sure. I, oh, wait. Oh, right. I kind of know what he's referencing. I mean, it doesn't ruin it, but it definitely it, it heightens it. And I think that that's the same thing where you can kind of piece it together. I don't mind the strategy of, of that at all. Um, all right. Next question. Noah Vilverde. There are rumors about a Finn series simultaneously exploring his First Order origins and his post Rise of Skywalker journey, like him exploring the Force. John Boyega mentioned he'd be interesting to return if the story is right. What do you think? Look, I'm a massive John Boyega fan. Um, and what I gathered from this is the same thing where, let's not forget that now the prequels, because the people who grew up with them 20 years ago or whatever, um, it's becoming more beloved. And Hayden Christensen said as much in, a, in, a, in an interview, right? But they weren't. And they, they kind of caught a lot, of, a lot of smack about a lot of the stuff that was, um, that was in it, you know, whether it was the acting, the writing, any, any of it. And Ewan McGregor even, I think one of the main reasons he came back to do Obi-Wan is to be able to explore this character in a different way, to be able to do Obi-Wan Kenobi in a different way, and to be able to dive deeper into the character in ways that he wasn't able to do in the prequels. And I think the same could be said about John Boyega. I think Boyega um, has been very vocal. He hasn't, I don't think he loved his experience. He went in very fresh and, and, and was excited, and he's a big Star Wars fan, and he was bummed about some of the choices that were made, and he didn't like, and I didn't like a lot of the character choices that was ma made for him either. Um, and it was, and it's still, and some of the storylines didn't even make sense. It's like, oh yeah, he's, he's got this big secret he wants to tell Ray, and he goes to tell her, and then he just never tells her. And then he, he's, he's, he has the force, but he never really uses it. It was just, he just, they just kind of like, oh, give him something to do so he's not completely upset. And it just wasn't, he kind of didn't dirty, right? Um, and I think that if he has an opportunity to explore it in a, in a way where you get somebody on there that knows that, that really is passionate about it in the way that Deborah Chow is passionate about telling an Obi-Wan story, or you have these people that uh, John Favreau and you have people who are passionate about telling the story and know where they want to go with it. And it's him learning about becoming a Jedi and, and it, and part of Ray's, um, and, and Ray, it's so funny cause my, my head goes into the Colin Trevorrow duel of fates script. And in that script, she starts her own Academy. I I'd like them to explore that and go down that route and whether he's part of it or not. But I mean, I guess you'd have to get Daisy Ridley to be part of it too, but not really. He could go and, and, and do his own thing and, and start finding out more about his history, which we didn't really get either. Maybe, you know, his, his parentage, his parents and, and everybody. Um, so I would, I would actually be, I would be up for it. I'd be up for it because I, well, and it also like any other project, um, the right showrunner, the right the people who are writing the scripts, whatever the the take is in general. Um, but yeah, I'd be up for it. I think that it's it's if they do it the right way, I'm 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 with I'm with Boyega here. If if the script's right and it sounds good, then then why not? I think I think Finn deserves another shot. To be completely honest with you. All right, next one. Let's get to this next question here coming up. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Here it is, and this is from Jeremy Shook, Shook Daddy. Uh, do you think they should use James Earl Jones as Vader, or should they use someone else? I'm torn on this one. I'm torn on this one. Because I do think that it is very noticeable that James Earl Jones is 91 years old or whatever he is. I do this a lot. Let's try it again. Hey, Siri, how old is James Earl Jones? James Earl Jones is 91 years old. 91. All right, he's 91. So you can tell he's 91. He's got an older, he's got an older voice, and you can tell a lot in Rogue One. Um, there are a lot of actors out there, voice actors, that can get that younger sound of, of Vader. It's out there. But James Earl Jones has earned the right that if he wants to do it, you should let him do it. You're going to notice it, but it's James Earl Jones. You know what I mean? It's like, 
look, am I, am I going to say, okay, you can really tell that he's, he's just an older gentleman at the time. I'd probably say that. Will I really care? <laughs> I mean, look, in Rebels, same thing. He's the voice in Rebels. I noticed it, and that was only, what, it was late 80s when he was doing it. Noticeable. Then I got over it. Same thing with Rogue One, right? So I do think, though, that eventually he's going to say, I don't, uh, I, don't, I don't think that I want to do it anymore. Um, I mean, look, and I hope, I hope he lives to 100, 110, 115 years old, 120 years old. But eventually, he's going to pass on. Now, again, hopefully 20, 30, 40 years from now. But he's going to pass on. And Star Wars is going to keep on going, and Vader will probably keep on going. Eventually, they're going to have to get another voice. Um, that's, that's my personal opinion. But um, now, do they get him? And if he wants to do it, then if he wants to do it, then they should let him do it. That's, but the, the, also, the other question is, how much do they need him? How big are the scenes that they need him? Um, because how much time are you going to have to have him come in? Is it just a few throwaway lines, or is it, is it significant? Um, I don't know. But I don't think he's going to bitch or complain if he's in it, though. I'll tell you that. All right. Next one. Now we go to Raphael Espinal. Should Disney decide to do a new Star Wars trilogy set years after the sequels, who should be the big bad for it? A Sith army or back to the back to Empire First Order, Final Order? Jeez, choose a lane, palps. Yeah, seriously. Um, after the sequels, I don't know, man. I this is why this is now where I get into my TV. Stick to TV. I don't think they need to do any more movies in that time period. However. If they start to set up TV shows that become very interesting and new characters that become very interesting, I could change my tune. I don't think setting a new trilogy... And look, the other side of this is, let's say, the same way that there's nostalgic things happening all over the place now with movies of like, oh, look who's back. If Daisy Ridley in 20 years decides she wants to, be, she wants to come back as, as like an, an older, wiser Jedi and actually build the frickin' Jedi Order and have Jedi Order, the Jedi Order running around and have an actual Jedi again, um, I'd be up for that. But it just depends on, on, how it, on how it plays. But I think for right now, in that time period, stick with TV for now and, see and, build, and build and just build. So, yeah, that's... Uh, and as far as the big bad, if they were going to do it, either the TV or, or film, um, that's, that's a tricky one also. I, I, I think that what they could, they could do, don't make it anyone related to anyone, but what they could do is uh, you have a, a subsect of, of the Jedi Order. There's always going to be that balance of fighting for power and, and the Sith, and they didn't have the Sith come back. The understanding, like the, I thought that what they were going to do was like the study of the Sith and trying to battle what the Sith had learned and seeing if you can actually explore that, like the dark side, and, and overcome it. And it just never really works out. You can't overcome it. Um, that's what I was hoping for in the new tr trilogy and, and playing with lore. The way that they play with the lore in the TV was what I was hoping for. And they just... That's why I always say, like, for the movies, for me... And I know people clap back on it all the time, and I understand, but the, the, when, I, when I compare what they're doing on TV as compared to the, what they did with the new films... It very well made fan fiction films, and everybody that's not George Lucas's fan film fiction, I I, I understand, but it they just felt more so of the the idea of like I want to make a, a movie of, that's Star Wars, and that's what all all three of those movies feel like felt like, um, and they're enjoyable in their own right in certain in certain ways, you know, and we've talked about them at length inside of the rewatches and everything too, and you can go and revisit that, but um. I don't know. I don't know. We'll we'll we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it all uh, pans out. Of who's going to be what and what who the big bads will be. Mark O'Connell, top three books that you would like turned into television series. This is a uh, this is a great question. Great question. So, Darth Bane, as I mentioned earlier, I would love to see all three of those. But I think if you turn all three of those books, you could have between five to seven seasons of, uh, of a television show if you, if you 
adapted all of them, or if you wanted to, you could adapt them to four or five seasons. There's so much material for that. The question is, would they take a risk and have the big bad as, because there's never a series with like a bad guy in the lead, right? And that's something, I mean, I'm talking about in Star Wars, obviously, Sopranos and, and uh, Breaking Bad and things like that, but there's never been like, there's never been that thing because Boba Fett wasn't a bad guy. Let's, let's, he, he wasn't. He became, a, he became an ultra, in, in wrestling terms, he went from heel to face really fast. Um, so the top three books would be, I'm going to include Darth Bane as one book, but all three of them. Um, Darth Plague is for sure. Is another one, and again, this is stuff I don't think is ever going to happen because I don't think they're going to play with the the evil guys as the leads. Um, but I think that James Lucino book being turned into a book would be incredible. Um, I'll give you four. I think that um, that lo- that um, well, shoot, I'll give you five. Lost Stars. I think I'd heard that they were playing around in that, and then it got shot down, which is heartbreaking but lost stars could be one uh lords of the sith to see vader like a mini series like four episodes of palpatine and vader trying to get off of this planet with chum sundala flying around the joint uh it could be a lot of fun and then bloodline where where you could when people are ready for it and if you want to do a deep fake leia inside of that time period like a political show inside of the uh the star wars realm I think Bloodline would be a good one. Um, all right, before we move on, before we move on, I do want to tell you, obviously, guys, this Friday, really big, really, really big. If you've never watched the Schmodown before, we have a new show called Friday Night Titans. And it is if you're a wrestling fan, then you're going to get it. It's either Monday Night Raw or AEW Dynamite. It's the same, same idea. And if you're not a wrestling fan, it's, it, think about it as, a, as a, a drama, a TV show that happens every week. The, the stories, the, the characters, but the trivia is all real. It's high competitive trivia with a lot of characters and a lot of fun. And if you haven't given Friday Night Titans a shot, please do. And what an event we have on the 25th. Marisol McKee is the champion. If she wins, she'll have defended the title for... The third time, nobody's done that. And Sam Levine, if he wins, he'll be only one of five people who will ever have repeated and after a four-year layoff to come back and win his second world championship, he's got to beat Marisol McKee, who is the number one. And then you got William Bibiani, the reigning team's champion, against Chance Ellison. They're going head-to-head in the undercard. So it is worth it. If you're not a patron, you should. Patreon.com slash Schmodown, or you can buy the single ticket for Friday. It will be on um, it will be on the YouTube channel, but I would really, really recommend checking it out. And if you haven't watched Friday Night Titans, please go and do that. Please check it out. And the other thing, hey, it's me undies. I love me undies. I really do. I love me undies. I was talking about it. I love it. It's incredible. It's, uh, I've been using them since Schmoes. No, comfortable. And you guys, when you wake up in the morning, what's the first thing that you do? Do you get a cup of coffee? Do you pet your dog? Or, or do you love just seeing the, the person you wake up to in the morning? Well, me undies wants to be part of that list. So start your mornings with your favorite underwear. It's not just on the, any underwear. It's really, really soft on these with ridiculous prints that make picking out underwear. It's fun. I've had them forever. And I've had, um, I, I've had, they have Star Wars ones. They have, they have a lot of different things besides just underwear. But I've, I've had so many pairs of me undies since the Schmoes days that I was addicted to them. And then I just, the fact now that we're back with them and we've been, we've been for a while since Sith Council and, and, and Big Thing and all of it. So um, what underwear do you guys always pick from your drawer? Is it comfy? Is it cute? Can it be both? Me undies, it makes the, so- the softest fabrics that you've ever put in your body so you can sit on the couch all day if you want to, or you just live your comfiest life. Once you try on their, their undies, their socks, their bralettes, their loungewear, you're just never going to go back, I promise. Choose from a range of limited edition prints and colors and sizes from extra small to four extra large. You can also sign up for their free to join Me Undies membership, where you get a monthly subscription that sends new styles right to your door. Plus, Enjoy discounted pricing, free shipping, and exclusive early access to new launches. MeUndies has a great offer for my listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you're going to get 15% off and you get free shipping. And MeUndies, has all, has, MeUndies also has their promise. If you're not satisfied with any product for any reason, you can just return your order for a full refund within 45 days. 
Now, to get your 15% off your first order and free shipping, go to MeUndies.com slash Sith. That's MeUndies.com slash Sith. If that don't work, try MeUndies.com slash Big Thing. That's MeUndies.com slash Big Thing. All right. Let's get back into it. There's a lot. I am so excited and, and blown away by all the questions that came in today. There are a lot of really good ones. And we'll keep on going. Kenny Childers, what's a Disney Plus series you really want to see that hasn't been announced or released yet? I'm assuming you mean for Star Wars. Um, I think that kind of plays into what I just talked about. But if it, at all the ones that I talked about that I really want to see, I got to go with that Plagueis one, man. I mean, if, if anybody's been following me since the far, far away days, it was like an ongoing joke with myself and Tiffany Smith. I would just bring it up all the time because it just, that book blew me away. It was just so, it was so dense and it just had so much it was a gang it was like the real it was like a real gangster story and james james lucino is just such a great writer and the idea and the mythology and the way it tied into the prequels and and how it tied into everything that um how, what like palpatine and the idea and what i really thought was so fascinating about it was when you look at someone like anakin anakin is a good person who is corrupted by his passion and his immaturity and, and, and just makes a bad choice. Palpatine's always been a bad dude. He just happened to really embrace the dark side, but he's becomes in, in this, in this novel, like it's not canon anymore, but he came from a rich family. I mean, like, again, it's a spoiler for the book and I don't know if they're going to make it. So whatever he kills his, he kills his dad. And he did that way before he was, he was, he was a bad dude, man. He was a psychopath and you know, but he was very smart. And he played it out, and he, and he went under the tutelage of Plagueis, who was a, the, the species was Mune, and I would love for them to continue that if they indeed ever bring him in. Um, I think that was a request from Lucas for him to be that, but I don't know. So I would love to see that, like to do a – and I always thought Hiddleston would be a good one, but with so tied into Loki, I'm not sure. Um but man, and I didn't. But and it seemed, I don't think he ever really confirmed it. But I think Matt Smith and Rise of Skywalker was supposed to play a young Palpatine. I think, I don't know. Anyway, um, I would love to see, like a again a four to six episode miniseries based off of that novel. I think it would blow people away. I just don't think Lucasfilm would think that. You know, if if those reports are true, which I don't know if they are, about Obi Wan being a little bleak. So they changed up some stuff. They're never going to do a play, I guess. I'll tell you that. It's about as bleak as you get. And I think it's okay to do bleak every once in a while. But what are you going to do? Next one. Matt Bosch. You going to Star Wars Celebration? What films, TV shows, books, comics do you want to see them announce? Well, thank you, uh, Matt. One of the things that actually ties into that, and I think they, they, they're announcing that the um, Fallen Order trailer part two is going to debut there, which makes sense. It's going to be a lot of stuff that debuts. What, as far as am I going, I, me, I am most likely, I would say, 90% going. Uh, I will, I'm hoping to go to the panels and, and go and report on them and do videos for this channel and do some stuff. Um, so I'm crossing my fingers that I will most likely be going. Now, the unfortunate thing is what we thought we were going to do, because we've done it the last two celebrations, we've had two Schmodowns there, and we had Jedi Council there, and I thought we were going to be a Sith. Um, we, were not, uh, we were not approved. It just, it, 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 they, we reached out to Reed Pop at one point, and it looked like we were going to, and then we didn't hear anything back from the people we were dealing with. And then by the time we requested, because back in the day, what we used to do is we would go through them, they booked it for us, and then we didn't have to fill out the the other podcast stuff but because we didn't hear anything back i was like maybe we should fill out those or i should say terry lynn I was like maybe we should fill out these um these th these podcast things now and request them and we did and it was too late so unfortunately i don't think we're going to have showdown panels or or sith council because we haven't heard anything back so that doesn't look like it's happening but i do think it is very possible that i will be going to celebration um, and what panels I'll be looking forward to the most, obviously the TV stuff. I think they're going to announce a movie, uh, maybe two. I'll take it with a grain of salt when it's announced. I think the only one that's realistically going to happen, I think, is the Taika Waititi. So maybe we get, a, maybe we get a, uh, an announcement of what that actually is. 
So I'll be excited to hear about that. I'm excited to see a little bit. We will probably get a, a teaser or, or inside the panel. You'll probably see a scene or two from episode two of, of Obi-Wan because part one will have dropped like the day before or something or two days before, something like that, before it starts. Um, Acolyte news I'm really excited to hear about. Maybe an Andor trailer. Um, Mandalorian season three, we'll probably get a trailer because they're done filming. So I'm sure they'll have like a little teaser or something to, or something brief or maybe just an idea of it. Uh, that's, uh, that's about it, I think. Well, that's not true. There's probably, there's a lot of other things too. I'm not as pumped about it. When I used to go to Celebration, I used to really get really pumped about the, the books and I don't get as pumped anymore because I haven't invested as much as I used to inside of those books. I think that they're going to get me back on board with the books when they finally adapt one of them into a series or, or a movie. That's when they'll get me back on board because I'll probably read, the, I'll, I would read that book. And if it's like, if, when the investment kind of pays off on it, like Harry Potter fans, you know, when you read those books, it's an investment. And then it, it paid off when you saw them in the theaters because you invested all that time and, and, and emotion inside of it. And I'm not saying that it's the only reason to read books. You read books for the good stories of it. I just, for my personal enjoyment of it, um, I was always kind of hoping, like when I, I think I was most bummed out when I heard that they were considering Lost Stars and then they went, nah, it's the book and nobody, it's, it's, it only has a certain amount of audience and blah, 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 blah. How much true it is, I have no idea. But that's just things that I heard. And if that's the case, I was just kind of like, eh, it's such a good book. It'd be such a great series. Eh, I guess I'm not going to get invested anymore. But that's me. That's not you. You can, you do whatever the hell you want to do. All right, moving on. So yes, I'm going to try hard to go to, um, to Celebration. Gregory Engvall Dopp. What's a couple of your personal dream Star Wars TV series? I think I just kind of, I guess I kind of answered that one. Yeah, I guess I kind of answered that one. Craig McRobbie, for the upcoming Acolyte series, do you believe it will be told from the point of view of the Sith and him, her taking on an apprentice, or will it be more from the point of view of a Jedi or Jedi apprentice falling to the dark side? Um, I think it's going to be more about the Sith. I think that's why uh, Acolyte is I think it's going to be more about the Sith. And I and what I'm hoping is because I think it takes place like 50 years before Phantom Menace, I think, and, or 50 or 30. So it's, it's like the end of the High Republic. And I, if they again play into some of the lore of Bane, where Bane, after Bane created the Rule of Two and went on the run, went on the... Remember, they were, they were hiding for a very long time because depending on how much plays into actual canon to what it was in the book, the Sith could never, over, could never defeat the Jedi when it was army versus army because they were always fighting within each other and they were always craving the power within. There was too many of them. They could never, they could never be in unison to, to defeat the Jedi. So Bane was like, there's got to be... There's got to be two, one to have the power and the one to crave it. And then when the more powerful one gets, will kill the other one and then they train someone else. That's got to be the rule. And he's like, but we got to hide in the shadows until it's time. And that lineage just kept on going for a while until, you know, Plagueis trained Palpatine and then Palpatine told Maul, all right, now it's time. Now we're going to show ourselves. And that's why Maul says the last, it's finally, it's time that we're going to, finally let ourselves be shown and that part of it is canon right so i think that that's what we're going to see with acolyte i think it's a sith kind of joining what a great reveal would be at the end is that whoever may, maybe 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 a, a combination of both what you're asking that there's one of the jedi that turns and becomes the master that ultimately then that person then trains plagueis be great reveal if Plagueis was the was the the apprentice at the very end of it. I don't know if they're going that way, no clue, but that would be that would be that'd be fun, and I'm looking forward to that series very much. So, so we'll see. All right, next one. Oh, before we get to the next one, actually, I will also I want to tell you guys that it is it is time. It's March Madness, everybody. You guys know that. It's March Madness. You're paying attention to it. You know what's going down, and my bookie is here and you guys you, i've been working with my bookie for a little bit now and with the madness officially beginning it is time for you guys to shoot your shot and you got to score big on the non-stop action we got to use my bookie 
It doesn't matter whether you're filling out multiple brackets, betting the national championship winner, or you're just looking for player and, pro and game props. MyBookie has you covered. You sign up today at MyBookie and use promo code BIGTHING to secure a first deposit bonus up to $1,000. It's simple. You just put in $200 and you play with $300, but you got to use that code Big thing to claim your bonus, whether it's college ball, NBA, UFC, no matter the sport, no matter the minute, my bookie puts the action in your hands with in-game live betting. And with choice from thousands of lines and odds, you can turn any game day into payday. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere, and use my bookie. All right. Let's keep going with these questions. Oh, he did that one already. He did that one already. Let's do one we haven't done, shall we? And that is this one. Elias Martinez. I'm sure. Oh, wait, we did that one. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. What happened? Did I do a lot of, I did a lot of repeating here? I must have done a lot of repeating. Here we go. Ian Walter, assuming Palpatine, was born roughly 80 years before. Uh, and before you have it, is that what it is? Darth Plagueis was around 115 years old when he bit it. The Acolyte series will predate Palpatine's involvement. Do you think the Acolyte will tease a connection to Plagueis? And who's an ideal casting? Um, so I just briefly talked about that. And I do think that they should tease Plagueis. But I am crossing my fingers. It doesn't matter who they cast. They get me to cast a good actor, obviously. But it doesn't need to be well-known because I want them to be... I want the species to be immune. I don't want it to be a human. I think it is so much more menacing to have him like this banker clan like just that the one that goes off and does his own thing it would make way more sense and more menacing um so i'm hoping they stick to that so i don't so that's my ideal casting is someone who's really good that that's really that's really it when it comes to that i just i don't need i, I hope i hope it's not a human i'll be bummed all right rick duran do you think mando and grogu will survive after the series finale we have yet to see any material that took place around the time of the sequel trilogy, but that doesn't seem like they were around. Um, yeah, I think it just depends on how they're going to play that out. I think that out of the two of them, Din has the bigger chance to eat it out of the two of them. Because if they, as I mentioned earlier, if they do this, if they set up the unknown regions, which they very well could, if they set it up well enough, you can put Grogu out in the unknown regions Get him out there to, with Ahsoka because that's where they're probably is, is where they're explaining where Ahsoka is. She's out in the unknown regions, and when you're out in the unknown regions, you're gone for a very long time. And again, time and space and all that stuff it could be, time could fly. So um, I don't know. If, I, I think Din has a better chance of eating it than Grogu does. I don't think they're gonna kill Grogu. I just don't. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna kill him. And I don't know how many seasons it's gonna go either. That's another question. Brandon Cole, isn't it hypocritical of Luke to make Grogu choose while he left Dagobah to save Han and Leia? I mean, look, yeah, of course it is. It is. But this is also a much, this, I mean, not much younger, but he was younger when he made that choice, and then he become wiser, and, and it ultimately leads to his reasoning of why he thinks he did a lot of things the wrong way, uh, the conversations that he has with Ray, whether you like it or not. It's ultimately where he goes, right? So, yeah, of course it's hypocritical, but he, um, but he, but he's trying to learn from his past. He's trying, and he, but he stays calm during the whole thing. And Yoda was kind of like, listen, stay here, you little prick. And he's like, nope, I'm out. And he, wasn't, he didn't act that way with Grogu. He let, him, he let him have a choice. So, yeah, but it is, for sure. Daniel Patron, do you think we'll ever see a Revan or a Bane series? Oh, I hope so. If it's Revan, it's going to be inside of the Knights of Republic, and I think it's more likely than a Bane series. Again, I, it, it's rumors about Bane and stuff too. I just, I don't think that they have, I don't think that, I don't think they have the balls to do a TV show about a villain. I think they're too, the Disney, Disney, I should say. I, I think that there, there's a lot of people inside of the Lucasfilm that would want to do it, but I don't think Disney would want to do it and lead with a villain, so I don't think it's possible, which sucks. But what are you going to do? I hope I'm wrong. Mr. Pastry. Chances of seeing Krennic in Andor. Will this be when he was lieutenant commander and working with Galen Erso? I mean, it would be. I mean, he's around. He's live. So, I mean, I think that's another thing. We haven't really talked too much about Andor, right? And 
there's only so many spy missions that you can do without seeing the Empire. You got to see the Empire, and, and the and I think having him in it would be great. And I think there was a rumor that he was in it. I don't remember. There's so many rumors and stuff too. But I I think that having him be in it would be great. Um, and yeah, he would be working with Galen at that point. And uh, how much more he gets involved. And Tarkin could be in it too. I want to see a lot of the Empire in that series. I want to see. I want to go back and forth between the Rebels and the, and the Empire. I don't want to just do spy missions every single time. I think that'll get tiresome. But I would love, I would love to see Krennic in that one. Whether we see him or not, I'm not sure. But I, I, I would love to. Uh, Bungo15, do you think making movies or series that take place after Episode Nine is a good idea? Oh, we've kind of spoken that a little bit. Um, there are rumors of movie. Yeah, sorry. I apologize. I think I do. I did. T- I just wanted to take as many as I can. But I and I kind of took some of the so Matt I, I, I answered this briefly before uh, with the Boyega one so I'll move on with that one um, Kylo Jedi 887 do you think we'll get a lot of Vader in the next trailer or just a little I think we'll get a nice amount at least one scene if they do another trailer which I think they will and maybe the igniting of the lightsabers between the two of them don't sh- I don't need to see the actual fight just show me the uh, the two sabers igniting, letting me know that it's about to go down. That's really all I need. Um, but I do think we get Vader. I think we see Vader in the next one. I think it was smart not to show him in the first one. But I, if you do a second one, you got to show him, especially with Hayden back in the suit and all that. Um, I don't think if they're going to do flashbacks like with Hayden, I don't think you need to show it in the trailer. But I, how much of him? I, I think it's brief. I think it's very brief of what you see him in the trailer, uh, if at all. But I think I think you should see him in the next one. All right, let's see. Next trailer. Or next trailer. Next question. Jesse Gonzalez, would you rather see Thrawn in the Ahsoka series or have him be the subject of a big crossover event? Uh, column, I think little column A, column B there, Jesse. I think I'd like to see him in, definitely in Ahsoka and build it up and I think lead into where we saw Luke and Ahsoka – like, why not do a miniseries with Luke, right? If you can do him in that. I think you got to change his voice, though. I think you got to change his voice. The, the robotic kind of monotone, no character voice. I, I get it that you can make him sound similar to him, but it, I'd rather have somebody who can do a voice that sounds like him, but it's, it's not a robot. So, because they got, the, the look of it is great. Um, and Ahsoka and Luke seem to look like they're going to meet up again. And then maybe whether Luke comes into Ahsoka and I, maybe they can do a version of the Timothy Zahn story with um, Heir to the Empire and, and all that and have, and have Luke and, uh, and Thrawn go head-to-head in a, in a crossover event. That could be fun. And that would be a fun crossover movie, you know, or even a four-episode thing. So that's, that's a lot of fun. I, I would think I'd, the answer to that is both for me. All right, we'll do a couple more, then i got to get going. Corey Campbell, will we see more interaction between Ahsoka and Luke? Uh, Yeah, I think so. Now, the question is, is it the end of Ahsoka, or is it in a completely different series, like a mini-series with Luke? TJ Marino, what do you think the reason that they won't do an Old Republic era show? I know they are doing High Republic books, but would like to see them go way back to have more freedom and get creative with it. Yeah, I don't know why they're not. I I think the reason why they're not doing it right now is because they do have, look, they, they can only they only can do so much and they have so much that they're working on and they, and they're, and I think that they finally got, they're in a good space right now with the fan base where they have things that the fans are excited about. Like they don't like, they just have to rely on fans getting excited about the movies for a while. And that wasn't working out as much. And it was kind of, everyone's going after each other. Now people, whether you like an episode of Boba Fett and you get to the next one, you like that one better than, and then you get the Obi-Wan trailer. It comes so fast that it just washes out any bad taste that you might have, whether you have it or not. Um, because there's so much and so much stuff, the potential of things that can come out as opposed to two, three, four years. Um, so as far as Old Republic goes, I, I think that they're just waiting to see. You know, I do think that they should explore it because they continuously get asked about it. But I think they worry about mainstream stuff and whether the mainstream audience is going to like it because you don't. The difference with Mandalorian, Boba Fett, Obi Wan, uh, Andor, they all take place inside of a time period where if you need someone to come in for nostalgia purposes and go, oh, I, I know that person, remember that, um, it's there for you. Seatbelts off. It with uh, 
and handcuffs are off with Old Republic, your casual fan can't lock in. And that's why they're gradually starting to pepper in this High Republic stuff because maybe you can tie it into the Phantom Menace just a little bit. But Old Republic, it's, it's, you're in the deep end with stuff that people don't know, and you've got to build it out. I think that's exciting, personally, but I understand the hesitation of it. But, it's a, but that's why the TV shows, to me, make more sense. I don't think that you do it in, in, in film yet. I mean, I think they were going to at one point. That's what Benioff and Weiss were going to do. I think that they were going to do like the formation of the Sith and Jedi and all that shit, and that fell apart like every other movie. But I don't know. All right, let's do, let's do two more. John Lee Garrett, despite episode nine claiming it was the end of oh, this, so we, let's see, uh, do you think this causes problems? Let's see. Despite episode nine claiming it was the end of the Skywalker story, parts of what has made the streaming series so successful so successful is that it is rooted in the original story that we know. Do you think? Do you then think this causes problems for unconnected trilogies Lucasfilms are working on? Um, that's kind of the point I think I just made. Uh, it's it's risky. But the lore and the magic of Star Wars is still there, right? The, the, the idea behind it, the set up new characters, you got to set up these new things um, in a time period. And that's why I think the Acolyte is the most intriguing to me because everything else, whether it's Ahsoka and or um, and this, this other Stranger Things series, if it's indeed, tr- and that goes back to the celebration question also, um, Maybe they announced that series, if it, if it is indeed a, a series. But that's why those High Republic series, to me, are the most intriguing, because it plays in a time period where they can't, they can't rely on that stuff. And I think, that that's, I think that's more exciting. So that's why I think that it, it's, it's interesting to see how they're going to make that work. But I still think they can do it. I think they can do it. Albert Rodriguez, would you like to see Cal Kestis in the Obi-Wan show, and would you want to see him get his own show? Do I want to see him get his own show? No. Do I, think, do I want to see him in the Obi-Wan show? Yes. I think that that would be a good way to tie it in and, and understand, like because he's running around at that time period, um, and it would be a good way to, to connect everything together, especially with the Inquisitors and the way that they played that. So, yeah. Michael Lindstrom, how far into the future should a new trilogy of movies be set in? Nah. Or should there be a trilogy at all? Nah. Should there just be standalone movies? Yeah. And that's not the, the best, most elaborate answers, but I mean, that's, that's all I got. All right, last one. Mark Stoner. Oh, definitely. Got to end with Mark Stoner. When do you think we will see Moff Gideon again? Season three. Is this another waste of a fantastic actor with not a lot to do so far? Potentially be a huge villain. Oh, come on, man. He's had a lot to do. He's had a lot to do. Are you kidding me? He had the dark saber. did a lot, and I think that uh, he, and they, they kept him around, and he was ready to off himself, but they kept him around for a reason. So, uh, yeah, he'll be back. He'll be back in season three, and I think he'll be working more. And I think there's more to come with the cloning and all that shit, too. All right, listen. A lot of fun. Once again, please subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. Hit the notification button. Do everything that you can do, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Please, I appreciate you very much. And leave those comments, please, even if you're watching the premiere right now. If there's 200 of you watching right now, if there's 300 people watching the premiere, just drop a comment. Because if I respond and you guys comment back it helps the algorithm it helps more people learn about the channel and learn about the show and and it it helps tremendously so please 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 um do that and then the other thing once again friday night titans it happens this friday please go and check that out links in the description we're building it up friday night titans if you've never seen episode one and you're like hey you know i i I heard about the schmo down i watched just not my it's a totally different thing please go and check it out i'd love to get your opinions and your thoughts um, and that's it. So, all right, everybody. Thank you guys so much for joining me here on Sith Council. Love you. Appreciate you. See you next time. I can feel your anger. It gives you focus. Makes you stronger. <laughs> <laughs>